and welcome to the lesson Project Identification of the Lean Six Sigma Green Belt Certification Course. This lesson will cover project identification in the define phase. This lesson will take you through the following topics. The process of selecting a project for Six Sigma, the need for benchmarking, the need to identify project stakeholders, and the importance of stakeholder analysis. What do you think differentiates well-performing organizations from organizations that achieve breakthrough performance? The answer is the ability to identify the right project opportunities that drive the organization forward. In this topic, Project Selection, you will learn the five steps for project selection and the types of benchmarking. In the first step, identify organizational needs, methods such as BSC or some other strategic planning tools are used by an organization to define its organizational needs. An organization needs projects to improve and develop its functional areas and to meet customer needs. Projects need to be aligned to the organization's key business objectives. The identified projects drive the advancement of organizational objectives as they are aligned with organizational needs. Capturing baselines or current state performance and benchmarking are the activities that help find project opportunities. We will discuss benchmarking in the forthcoming screens. In the next step, the projects that support the organization are further examined and evaluated in the following areas. Net present value or NPV, which is the difference between the present value of estimated cash inflow and outflow of the project over the project life cycle. In other words, the profitability of the project in today's dollar value. Cost benefit ratio, which is a ratio of the monetary costs and benefits of a proposed project. Internal rate of return or IRR, or the rate at which the NPV is equal to zero. Opportunity cost, which is the cost of selecting one project over another. Payback period, which is the total time required for recovering the initial investment made in a project. Note that these are only the financial criteria to evaluate projects. There are other factors that an organization can use, such as impact to customer satisfaction or impact to employees. In the next step, the project that meets the organizational need strategy and ranks highest in the evaluations is selected and initiated. It is selected to drive the organization forward and meet the organizational requirements. In the final step, the selected and initiated project is reviewed to ensure that it is aligned to organizational goals. Let's understand more about this activity. Benchmarking is the process of comparing an organization's business process, practices, and performance metrics with those of industry leaders. This is an activity performed heavily in Design for Six Sigma or DFSS projects but is sometimes necessary for DMAIC projects as well. DMAIC, as you know, breaks down to define, measure, analyze, and prove, and control. The types of benchmarking include process benchmarking, which is comparing specific processes to a leading company or an industry standard. Financial benchmarking, which is a detailed financial analysis and comparison along with information on overall competitiveness and productivity. Performance benchmarking. This is a comparison of products and services with those of competitors. Product benchmarking. This is designing new or upgrading existing products or services. Strategic benchmarking. Is focused on studying strategies and problem solving approaches in other industries. Functional benchmarking. This is a focused analysis of a single function with the aim of improving it. Competitive benchmarking. This is benchmarking organizational strategies, process, products, services, and procedures against the competitors. And also collaborative benchmarking. This is benchmarking carried out by a group of companies where the information is shared. 
To ensure continuous improvement and exceptional performance, it is important to follow the best practices. The best practices to be followed while benchmarking are as follows. Determine the objectives or scope of benchmarking. Set the standards and path to be followed at the initial stage. Reduce unnecessary effort and comply with the scope. Recognize the best in the industry to set a benchmark. And also share the information derived from benchmarking. In this topic process elements, you will learn about requirements for a Six Sigma project and the SIPOC model. It is important to understand that not every project or initiative prioritized should be worked on as a Six Sigma project. As a Six Sigma professional, it is critical to know the requirements that should be met before deploying Six Sigma principles on a particular project. The first step is to check if the project qualifies to be a DMAIC Six Sigma project. The questions that need to be asked are as follows. Is there an existing process? If the answer is yes, then the DMAIC process should be followed. If the answer is no, then it lends itself to the DFSS process. Is there a problem in the process? If a problem cannot be articulated, it is not advantageous to use Six Sigma. Is the problem measurable? Since Six Sigma is a data-driven methodology, one should be able to measure current performance and performance after solutions are implemented to demonstrate a significant statistical difference. Does the problem impact customer satisfaction? Six Sigma is customer centric. In this, quality is defined by the customer, so the problem should have a customer impact. Does working on the problem impact profits of the company? Using the Six Sigma methodology should show a direct tie-in to increase profits to justify the program. Is the root cause of the problem unknown? The purpose of the Six Sigma rigor is to use data to identify the root cause of a problem. If the root cause of the problem is known, Six Sigma is not required. And lastly, is the solution unknown? If the solution is already known, then only implementation of activities is needed. Six Sigma's principles are not centered on implementing solutions. Only one phase out of the five is focused on implementing solutions. Therefore, a DMAIC project is not required if the solution is already known. To have a better probability of successfully completing Six Sigma projects, ensure Six Sigma principles are used on the project. And even better than that, ensure that the project meets their requirements to apply Six Sigma principles. When a project has been selected for Six Sigma deployment, project activities are defined in terms of processes. Whether the project is about treating patients in hospitals, making airplanes in the aerospace industry, or preparing a dish in a restaurant, project activities are defined in terms of processes. Understanding the project processes is an important part of the define phase. Let's take a look at the components of a process and see how they work together with the help of the SIPOC diagram. A business process has five elements, supplier, input, process, output, and customer, hence the name SIPOC. A supplier is a person or an organization that provides resources to the process concern. In some scenarios, the supplier and customer are one and the same. Input refers to the information, material, or services that will be transformed in the process. Process refers to the set of steps that transforms the inputs into output. In a SIPOC, the process is displayed in about five to seven steps that act on the inputs. It is a bird's eye view of what is happening. Output is the final product or service of the process. In other words, it refers to the result of what occurred in the process and directly impacts customer satisfaction. Customer is the last section of a SIPOC. A customer is a person, process, or organization that uses or receives the output. With this understanding, let's discuss how the SIPOC elements interact. One or more changes in supplier input or the process actions, the SIPs, will result in a change in the process output. If the SIPs are stable, the output will be stable or consistent. 
Consistency is the most important factor in the Six Sigma project. Relations between SIPs or the SIPs and output provide a method to define possible cause and effect relationships. These relationships can be termed as closed loop business systems. Let's look at an example of a SIPOC for an IT ticketing process. When creating a SIPOC, it's best to start with the process element first. In the image on screen, this is represented in the box in the center. In the process, a request is received, worked on, and closed. Now observe and work to the left of the process box. Identify the inputs required for each process step. This can include email request, phone request, documentation, ticketing system, hardware, software, and technical resource. Then identify the suppliers who will provide the identified inputs. The suppliers may include the requester, IT team, and external vendors. After the input and supplier are identified, observe and work to the right of the process box. List the outputs from the process. The output can be purchase order, an updated database, a completed ticket, and notifications. Finally, list the customers who receive the outputs. They can be either the requester or the IT team. Take a minute to review this SIPOC. And take note that there is a SIPOC template available in the toolkit for your use. Now that we've discussed a process and its elements, it's time to understand the challenges of business process improvement. Different functional groups and teams complete the different processes in an organization. The improvement of a business process of an organization faces challenges due to the traditional business system structure. They are, product or service has to go through various functions and their functional elements to reach the customer. This involves multiple handoffs and also management of the flow of products or services across various functional elements is difficult, but vital to ensure that the products meet customer requirements consistently. In the traditional business system, focus is on each function rather than the product output. Therefore, in traditional systems, functional managers typically have more control over resources than product managers, which makes it more difficult to align the entire process to improve the products performance or quality. In this topic, owners and stakeholders, you will learn about organizational hierarchy, effects of process failure on stakeholders, and the importance and relevance of stakeholder analysis. Now let's take a look at owners and stakeholders in the organizational hierarchy. The organizational hierarchy includes stakeholders, process owners, stockholders, customers, suppliers, management, employees, and society. The stakeholders are people who are affected by the organization's actions. The process owner is responsible for the performance and execution of the process. The stockholders are the people who invest in the organization. It is also important to remember that the society is impacted by the product, although they have no direct relationship with the project or the process. The processes involved in a project must be discussed with the stakeholders before commencing work. It is important to know the effects of process failures on stakeholders. Failure to meet one or more process objectives may result in negative effects on the stakeholders. For example, stakeholders perceiving reduction in value for the company, customers seeking competitors products and finding legal recourse, suppliers facing delay in receiving their pay or non-payment issues, management requiring cost cut down, employees receiving diminishing wages, and society experiencing pollution due to the organization's activities. Stakeholder analysis is an important task to be completed before doing a Six Sigma project. Some of the reasons are, a business has many stakeholders, and any change to a business process affects some or all of them. When a project does not meet its objectives, it results in the stakeholders being negatively affected which in turn impacts the organization's performance. And lastly, the Six Sigma team must factor in the reasons why a stakeholder may oppose the change effort. With this, we have come to the end of this lesson. A few questions will be presented in the following screens. When you have learned, the main focus of define is to define the objective of the project. The five steps for selecting a project are identify organizational needs, 
identify the projects, evaluate the projects, select the right project, and review the project. Benchmarking is the process of comparing an organization's business processes, practices, and performance metrics with that of industry leaders. A business process has five elements, supplier, input, process, output, and customer. The stakeholders are people who are affected by the organization's actions. The process owner is responsible for the performance and execution of the process. This concludes the lesson on project identification. The next lesson is voice of the customer.